Okay, I'm going to give this uh, product a review. It's the three-in-one top quality laminator. So this is what we get in the box. Hole punch. Some uh, little card making things, I guess. User's manual. I guess these are like uh, small pouches, which is probably what I'm going to use. And then larger ones um, that are, you know, looks like about eight and a half, nine by ten or eleven. Some little rings. I recommend to use three mil laminating sheets. Put the sheet into the machine along the direction of the A end in order to avoid the stuck issue. Okay. Whatever the A end is. <laughs> I'll plug it up. There's the uh, power button on the side. It has a hot and cold switch. I have to figure that one out. In the case of hot lamination, the lamination foil is adhered together. In the case of cold, the lamination foil is pressed together. So I, I want to do hot. I'm going to try a um, photo t paper as well between this. And the cold lamination should be used for thermo paper and ultrasonic images. Correct operating temperature is reached after about three to five minutes in the green display lamp. So we're looking for this to come on, turn green. Insert the document to be laminated in the pouch so there is a margin of approximately three to five millimeters to the edge of the foil on all sides. Use only foil intended for hot laminating. Insert the foil containing the document in the laminator's insertion lot slot. Insert the ready closed side of the pouch first. And when it says ready closed, so it's like like it's folded so this would be the ready closed side right here that's the folded looking part so while I'm waiting I'm going to stick my photo paper which is around four inches and I've cut cut it down just a bit to make it the size to go inside of a uh, silicone mold with resin and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a border like it says around all sides This is one of my art pieces, the Kintsugi Women series. And then I'll just, I'll cut around the edges as well. Okay, the green light is lit up. Okay, so this is the folded side that's closed. And I just put it in and it's taken it through. There's also, I noticed here there's a cutting tool, but I'm just going to use scissors to cut actually with. I'm not going to do that part today. And then it also says when you're finished with your machine to let it cool down totally before storing it away or whatever. All right. So here it is. Nice and smooth. And I'll cut around the edges to go into my mold. So again, the folded side that's sealed in first. So I'm going to sandwich this between layers of resin on this project, which I'll show you that part of the, the rest of the video. Last one. Again, it's a photograph that I put in. Now I'm going to turn it off. 
and let it cool down and unplug it. I will provide the link for this machine in the comments. This has a little bit of a curved edge, so I'm going to uh, cut around just with my scissors. So I was going to show you, I have uh, these square silicone molds. I'm going to put a layer of clear and then this fits perfectly into the mold and so I'll do clear and put it face down and then put a back layer of resin to cover the back of the photo. That's my plan. So I'm just going to finish cutting these. So there are the four laminated pieces and uh, so, so far, thumbs up on this laminator. I'm going to give it a try in the resin and to make sure that no resin seeps into the photograph or anything like that. So, I'll show the rest of it, the end of results, and let you see how it goes. Okay, so I've got four square coaster molds that hold about two and a half ounces of resin each. I'm going to put about an ounce or so of resin <clears throat> into each coaster. And then this is, I'm going to use Facet, which is the blue label with Counterculture DIY. And then I'm going to set my picture down into it that's been laminated. It's a photograph that's been laminated uh, after it tacks up. So we're going to do I'm not sure how much this little shot glass holds. I'm going to speculate about two ounces, but <clears throat> it's always by volume, not by weight. I'm doing B first, and what I'm going to do is mark my cup where I poured. It's not filled all the way to the top, and that way I'll know for sure I have equal amounts. The B is thinner, it goes in first. Facet does have a little bit of an odor and it will have lots of bubbles, so just uh, something to let you know about Facet. And I definitely recommend wearing a mask and eyewear, glasses, goggles. So A is going to be thicker like corn syrup. Just going to fill up to that line. Very important to have equal amounts. This is a five ounce cup and so this shot glass is probably two ounces or so. Okay so I have this timer. I don't ever use it but it I figured out how to get it started. I'm gonna mix for six minutes. Got my goggles on. I'm gonna put my mask on. Okay, that was six minutes, and uh, I want this to be a really dark blue. This is Counterculture Blue Sapphire <clears throat> Intense Color. So it's like very highly, highly pigmented, and it's made to go in resin. So that should be more than plenty to make it totally opaque. And then I'm going to put <clears throat> A drop of acrylic carbon black golden so I want it to be a really dark blue almost black and uh, fast set warms up pretty quickly so it's already feeling warm in my hands and it has a working time of about 10 or 15 minutes which we don't need to worry about that aspect because we're just doing solid color and it's going to just go into the molds as a base. I don't use it for anything where I want to achieve a 3D effect or anything like that. This is just going to be the underside of the coaster. I may even put cork under it. 
So I'm just going to pour a little into each. I don't care if dust falls into it or whatever because the photos are going to go on top of it. So I'm going to give it probably about 10 minutes or so and then check on it to see if I can put my photos into it. I don't want them to sink. I want them to lay on top. Okay, it's been 10 or 15 minutes or so since it was uh, mixed and so forth. I'm just going to lay these on top. The metal sets up before the edges do with facet. So I'm just basically lightly pressing. And I cut these a little smaller than I had uh, planned, but it is what it is. So I'm going to mix up about um, six ounces to finish out these molds. And I'm going to use medium viscosity, the yellow green label by Counterculture DIY. I would use the Fast Set because of the heat from Fast Set. I'm going to stay with the medium viscosity and just let it cure over time and it won't be quite so hot. Equal parts B and A. B goes first. And I'm, I'm mixing up an, a few extra ounces with this to go on another project. So, but I'm doing six for the coasters. Again, always have your baby wipes ready. Starting the timer. Okay, that was six minutes. Okay, so These did pretty good. I've got a few little bubbles. Got some little bubbles right in the corner. I kept heating these to get rid of the bubbles. And I think because there was, I don't see, I just tore that silicone mold. So I heated it so much that it stuck. So that mold is ruined. But what I can do is heat it and get this off with um, my razor knife. That I just can cut off. And that was super easy. So the back is just a dark navy black blue color. Let's see if any more stuck. I'm actually going to take the razor knife. It's not smart to do it towards your hand. So that one is damaged too. That one tore too.
that was 12 or 13 dollars down the drain so right, if you can try to get the pink molds are the ones that are not see-through that are thicker and more expensive then you don't have these little issues like this so and since this is you know my Kintsugi inspired artwork original artwork in here I'm gonna do gold edges with my gold paint pen Pebio for artist marker it's the jumbo just press and super easy to use I like to go around but before I do that I'm going to stick this on something that's elevated but I'm going to do the edge okay so the two options you have when you're doing a flood coat where you want it to go over the sides is liquid latex that you paint on the back with the brush or I've used even a folded paper towel but frog tape is a little sturdier and with squares you can kind of just do it you know quicker and it's super tacky and um, a little bit more durable than the liquid latex as far as drips and stuff go because uh, you can just kind of heat it and, and pull it off so I'm gonna do frog tape on these since they're squarish they're a little bit rounded corners but it'll be easy And if you need to, you can always uh, take a little razor knife and round the corners with the tape if you need to do that. And I like to raise them up with these little lids so that um, it can drip and not pull under your coaster on the silicone mat. And uh, I typically use, I've been, lately I've been using Facet for the flood coat, but because these have oil paint on the edges and sides, I, I don't want the extra heat that the Facet presents. I'm going to use the medium viscosity so it doesn't heat so quickly. It, it can run over the edges because it's thinner than the fast set and um, that way I think it'll just uh, do a better quick coat and just let it sit overnight and cure so I'm going to mix up I'm going to need probably half an ounce or so for each piece so that's two ounces and I'll mix almost three okay I've mixed it for six minutes so I'm just going to split it up four ways the medium viscosity is so much uh, thinner than facet facet is so super thick so it automatically is gonna just kind of go over the edges and so I'm just gonna use my silicone brush just to make sure that I've at least got it covered on the edges that's the great thing about silicone mats is uh, you can let all your drips and stuff just go over and land on the mat and then once it's cured you can peel it right off that's paint silicone 
resin. Alcohol inks will stain a silicone mat. Well, just a heads up on alcohol inks, but otherwise it's good. So I make sure that I go ahead and just get all this resin out of this cup, but I wanted to make sure I had enough to go over the edges, which it did. And I'm just going to take my fingers, go around the edges, get rid of those bubbles. All right, and cover it to keep things from falling into it. And we'll be back. Okay, here they are. And I may have to do a little touch up on the gold on the sides, but they're finished. So I hope you enjoyed something. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.